everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Eight wins in a row. When I started today, I was but a wee lad with only a few wins in a row. Now, I'm, you know, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I mean, if, am I the, the same size, smaller or larger? I mean, I, I, I had a meal in between this episode and the previous one, so I guess I, I mean, technically I'm larger. I've also, like, you know, burned calories over the course of doing the episode, but, you know, did that make me smaller? I mean, I don't know the kinematics of the situation exactly, you know? It's weird to think, because the, the calories that are burned, um, did they come from the, uh, you know, and I should probably know this is a biology major, but does it come from, you know, the food that, you know, is in your small intestine and having its nutrients absorbed, or does it come, is it more readily accessible to get it from the cells of uh, pre-existing, uh, you know, nutrients inside of them as a result of having eaten in the past? I guess the answer to that question is no, because when you eat something like, uh, super sugary it becomes energy like as soon as possible it's a high priority energy source anyway I'm not, I'm not trying to i don't know what i'm trying to do i'm willing to go for broke here i'll tell you that much oh that's not the good one unfortunately interesting but not good enough oh good enough now am i willing to you don't even need to ask brother i'm already doing it all right um What's the what's the long and the short of this run right now? Well, it's a good run, statistically speaking, as we sit here. DPS is good. Sorry, I didn't realize the mouse pointer had been on the screen for the past uh, minute and a half. Um, it's uh, statistically a good run with low speed. That's the one major negative. But 4 HP is uh, way above where you normally start, and that's thanks to Thunder Thighs. And then, uh, Rune Bag. You might turn up your nose at Rune Bag. It's not a damage upgrade, but that doesn't make it, uh, you know, any lesser of an item. It's what you need it to be when you need it to be that. Like an early Perthrow. Early Yera, even. Could you just stop with the spiders? We get it, okay? We all had a nice long conversation about how we feel about your spiders. Guess what? We're not for them. Nah, most of the time, we find them a little... No, okay, I'm not... I, there was a joke somewhere in there, but I lost it. Instead, it came across as me complaining about the game in a mean-spirited fashion. That's not what I meant to do. I was meaning to concoct a situation in which, you know, uh, there was a human being, perhaps, that was just way too attached to... You know, they'd just throw spiders at you for whatever reason, and we were staging a sort of pseudo-intervention for that. But I, I don't know if it necessarily came across... So I am doing my all. I mean, with Thunder Thighs, the HP is usually enough to compensate for the downgrade in speed, but simultaneously, if we could also just get a Crawl Space or a Black Market, particularly a Black Market would be really good right now. But everything's actually uh, is pretty hunky-dory here. It's a very sing-songy, hyphenated word. A potent man manteau, of course, uh, of hunky, which is, you know, to be physically uh, attractive in a masculine fashion. And Dory, uh, the forgetful fish from the Finding Nemo franchise, is hunky Dory. Very recent addition to the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. That's one I'd like to know the lexicographical origin of. That seems like a Middle Ages word, like a witch said it once. And people were like, hunky-dory. All right. <laughs> you know, that witch... I don't know where I'm going. I don't know any witchcraft jokes. Where does hunky-dory come from? 1866. Perhaps a reduplication of hunky... from Dutch honk... from Middle Dutch honk place of refuge. Okay. Um, wasn't expecting that. But, cool. There's so many here. Um, where does the saying, cut the mustard, come from? It's a great question. I never even thought about it. Like some kind of idiot. Wow. Wow! I, I, it took a second for it to sink in that you gave me a health downgrade there. 
right after I got the black market I asked for. Almost had a crawl space be useful. I mean, we still got restock, which is nice, but like... Now I'm like, oh, I can't take anything else. And moreover, I don't feel like I can really use Kamikaze anymore. You're a real jerk, you know that? That's a... That was the gauze, right? I think that was the gauze. Hold on. Which means, if we go back to the black market, we can actually see what the items are. I don't know why I'm stepping on stones still. It's a good point. No need. Um... We're doing everything in our power here. We've had some fast episodes today. I opened up some time for due diligence. So if there's anything amazing down here, we might feel uh, compelled to pick it up now. Gift. Mom's key, PhD, and the uh, stopwatch. Um, you know, there's, there's some stuff that's worthwhile. Is it worth... One of our two remaining HP, I would probably say no. And, you know, I actually do think Humbling Bundle is probably worth it, especially with uh, Petrified Poop. But I gotta see with the expression, cut the mustard. First recorded use was in 1907. I looked around and found a proposition that exactly cut the mustard. It was just made up by an author. I mean, I know all words are made up. I'm just saying, like, that one in particular. If you're looking for an origin, just some dude thought it sounded good. It doesn't come from the Dutch honk, which means a place of refuge, in case you were curious. I know you probably were. I love the, the origin of idioms, because some of them are really, really dumb. Some of them are like, well, you know, if you were a longshoreman in the 17th century, you used a long wooden hook uh, to take a log in. Thus the expression, hook the log. But some of them are like, you know, yeah, one time there was a dude named Tony, and uh, Tony loved pepperoni, and that's why we call Rip a pepperoni like Tony. I don't know how influential you have to be to get to the point where you get an idiom named after you for eternity, but by the way, Rip a pepperoni like Tony is not a real, it's not a real expression, but it, it does sound delightful, doesn't it? I kind of want to rip a pepperoni like Tony now. Um, okay. Well, sure. And, uh, you know, alright. This will probably pay for itself. It did. Uh, in case you were curious. Let's put another bomb down. And I want another of those. And you know what? Let's get another of those. See, I just, uh... I was a little insulted by that earlier health down situation. Now I'm a much happier man. That was... A bit risky to look for the secret room in that context, but uh, we gave it a shot. All right. Well, I regret everything. Thanks for asking. Uh, I don't want to get any. <sighs> so bad. I don't want to get anything else from the black market because one HP is a really good place to be for uh, the deal with the devil. I don't want to have to pay the deal with the devil fair in uh, Spirit Hearts. It's too expensive right now. Even with three and a half backing us up, you know? It's a freaking dime, dude! That's a, that's a lucky turn of events. It's nice to have uh, a weird synergy here. Let's save the gauze for the next floor, or if we, for whatever reason, end up needing it to pay for a deal with the devil, it could be worth it, but... Or, or if we get something else worth holding, obviously, but... What do you got for me? Dude, Explosivo? Not a terrible choice. Do want to see what else you might have on offer here? Nothing special. But you know what? To whom much is given, much is tested. We got a, a big floor. There was a little bit of negativity associated with it. I don't know where that came from, but... As the streamer, I am innocent and absolved of all crimes. You know, I, I mentioned it in a Gungeon episode. But I had a meeting, and we're going to take both here. So we probably should have taken the HP first, but it's, it's a bit of a gamble one way or the other. Um, I had a meeting at the bank today, and, um, you know, the dude we talked with, the bank, he's a cool dude. You know, I know he's a cool dude. He mentions he's, he doesn't watch my content, but sometimes he's like, yeah, like, I, like, uh, 
Uh, I'm aware of your content. He's like, you know, I, I follow you on Twitter and I see that you go live a lot. And I'm like, yeah, this, he's, he pretty much got the gist of it right there. Um, but he was talking to me about like my video production pipeline and was like, uh, do you edit? And I was like, nah, I don't edit. And then he was like, you know why you don't edit? Because unlike a lot of streamers, you don't say dumb stuff regularly. <laughs> when first off I went whoa secondly I thought to myself that is not why most people edit but thirdly I was like you know what he's not wrong I mean I say dumb stuff but I don't say that kind of dumb stuff that requires editing out if anything it gives people something to talk about when I'm like well you know what the best starburst are the orange starburst that's dumb but people are into it I like, though, that this guy... And he's a good guy. I'm just poking fun at him. I'm not actually making fun of him. But his idea of being, like, a YouTuber or a streamer is that you're just constantly... You have terrible things coming out of your mouth. And then you have to go to the editing room to cut out all the regrettable things you said. I'm not saying that that hasn't happened. There's probably been YouTubers who have accidentally let something slip. And then had to go into the editing room and they're like, hey, can you cut that part where I said terrible thing? But that's not why most people edit. Most people edit because unlike me, they can't be effortlessly entertaining for hours on end. And instead, they've just got to cut together a montage of them clicking on a person's head in a cartoon video game and going, oh! Sorry, that was needlessly insulting to other content creators and I didn't mean it that way, but... I don't even actually believe that. It's mostly just jealousy that I, I can't click on the heads. Do you see that there's a, one of the Fortnite professionals just got outed as being actually 12 years old? Which is not like, you know, something to be ashamed of. Except for the fact that you literally have to be 13 years old to have your own YouTube or Twitch account. <laughs> it's like, the news stories in this industry, they just get me every time. You know, you know, and back in 2012 when I would email publishers and be like, you know, Hey, is it possible? Could you spare a review copy of your game for a lowly YouTuber? And they'd be like, YouTuber? Hey, why don't you, why don't you get in this line over here? Yeah, yeah, you see this yellow paint on the concrete? That's where you should hang out. That's where we give all our YouTuber press copies. And then when I get there, I go, oh, it's the dumpster. And in that moment, with all the garbage surrounding me and the flies landing on me and biting me, tearing my skin and my flesh from my bones, I put my hands together, genuflected, and prayed, please, God, let us one day be a legitimized industry. And now I'm getting news stories like whatever, I forget the guy's username, but is actually 12 years old. 12-year-old child lies about age to make six figures a month playing Fortnite. I don't know if this is a monkey's paw situation or if this is actually the brave new world I wished for. I guess it's like it's not really that bad of a thing, you know? I mean, it's good for the kid except for the fact that he violated the terms of service, but, you know. I mean, I don't have a... I don't, I'm not in charge of policy at Twitch, so I don't know what they're gonna do. I'm just saying, like, you know, it's pretty amazing and also, like, you know humbling that a 12 year old child could be a hundred times better than me at a video game i mean the thing is like you know if if you're a preteen and you're an amazing video game player congratulations you're an esport athlete might sound funny i guess but like nobody bats an eye when like a 14 year old kid wins gold medals at the olympics in gymnastics you're just like yeah it's gymnastics that's what how, how can you expect an adult to compete with a 14-year-old child in gymnastics? And, you know, how do you expect me to compete with a 12-year-old kid at a game made for 12-year-olds? <laughs> That's not fair. I kind of still like Fortnite, but I have to pretend, uh, pretend to hate it to keep my street cred. I got nothing against Fortnite. Mostly because I don't have to go to a school and I'm sure every day kids would call me hey hey default skin hey Samsung Galaxy skin dude I thought my dad told me not to uh, told you not to call me that anymore 
I don't even know what I want. Let's go KMB and Conception and let's get let's get nuts. You wanna get nuts? Let's get freaking nuts, dude. Just bizarre news stories is all I'm saying, you know? Why is my speed so my speed went down when I became Dark Judas? Is that the norm? Also, are you selling spirit hearts? You're not. Well, I don't love uh, having the Necronomicon, but you could do worse than the Necronomicon. Yo, this is an ideal room. Yo, it's a really ideal room. We'll definitely take Egghead, and we'll definitely use Black Rune on Black Bean. Huge. Okay, stats are awesome. HP is just a slight... It's a little wonky. But apart from that, we're good. Dude, I honestly think it's... Like, it's a funny news story. But I am like, I mean, I'm for it. If a 12-year-old kid... It, that's the thing about a meritocracy. Everybody's always like, we want the best people for the, you know, all roles, you know? Well, when a 12-year-old kid takes your job at the Fortnite factory, let me know how you feel about that. Once Cobalt's kid starts playing Isaac 4, it's done for me, brother. Back to the glue factory for Grandpa Egg. No, I know I'll always have a place on this platform because the thing is, they're not... I, I'm a limited resource, you know? They broke the mold. They're no longer making people with this knowledge of, of that era of pop culture that I talk about at all times. You know, it, the only time people are going to become cultural scholars about the late 90s and early 2000s is, like, long after humanity has ceased to exist, the aliens will roam the radioactive soils of what used to be Vancouver, British Columbia, and they'll be like, what is this? Uh, the original pressing of something called uh, chocolate starfish in the hot dog flavored water. And a distant angelic, yeah, will sign out from across the valley. What valley? Uh, the, the valley, uh, uh, the Crab Nebula where the Earth now resides. Look, okay, I'm trying to build a moment at the world building, sweetheart, etc., etc. Look, this is the tenth video I'm recording today, okay? I'm trying to bring the heat, I'm trying to bring the flavor, but sometimes the bits are gonna peter out just a little bit. Book of Secrets, Book of Belial. Neither of which are fantastic, but I do appreciate Bookworm. And Ansus was not even worth popping. I don't know why I popped it. Hagalaz is also useless um, because we already have... We got super lucky there. We already have uh, Stompy. We could really actually just use a speed upgrade at this point. Come on. It's not like you've been uh, holding out on me this run. I mean, look at our stats. We got 18 damage. That's real good. But... A lot of that comes directly from Dark Judas. Kind of in the in the marketplace for like a little bit, a uh, little bit more static growth, if you know what I mean. Ah, we got bombs. Don't sweat it. They've been some wild runs today. Like to be real with you, I mean this is run four recorded today. Um, they've been fast for sure, but also. We've been pretty blessed. We've had a lot of runs that have been very, very high damage without being guaranteed wins. And, like, that's predominantly what I want when I play this game. I never want to feel like it... I don't think there's any enjoyment in defensive Isaac play. I do think it can be enjoying, uh, enjoyable to watch. Um, but to play when it takes you a minute to kill, like, basic enemies because your damage sucks, it's, it's frustrating on the player, right? Um... But high damage, low HP runs, where there's a lot of tension and every hit could be the one that sends you to the Shadow Realm. Those are the ones where I'm like, oh. That's what I, that's what I play the game for. I did see that uh, Edmund announced uh, the new Isaac DLC is set for a December release. That's good. Still a, like a pretty long way away. Just, oh dude, I love this. Thank you. A long way away. Still another six months. And, you know, I'm not saying it couldn't come out earlier than that. But usually, 
you know, game releases, they... If they go in either direction, they get delayed. So, it's still, it seems like it's fairly, uh, distant. But to be honest, you should take that as kind of a good thing, because it, I think it uh, points to the robustness, potentially, of what's being put on offer. I don't know that for a fact, obviously, but... You know, it, if they were like, it's coming out tomorrow, I would be excited, but then cooler heads would prevail, and I would be like, this seems like a lot of work you guys have done. Did you just work really hard, or is something, uh, you know, did, did you did you get lost in the sauce of the code? I don't assume that that would be the case, I'm just saying. You know, an early release date, sometimes it's a mark of, uh, he you get hesitant about it. I do, at least. I've still got this idiom page up here. <laughs> Where does the expression, the world is your oyster, come from? Falstaff, I will not lend thee a penny. Pistol, why, then, the world's mine oyster, which I with sword will open. Okay. Shakespeare's play, The Merry Wives of Windsor. Who, who amongst us didn't know that that was where that came from? I get it, the world's your oyster. Like, it, the meat is just for you. And with your sword, you open it. You know, you, if you've never seen an oyster being opened, you gotta, you know, use a sharp edge to kind of pry open the shell. Anyway. Hey, you know, that's one of the idioms that I have to say. I thought it was dumb. Or I thought, like, the origin would be dumb. But the origin is actually... It's just a metaphor that Shakespeare made. It's a little different than this O. Henry son of a gun. Just go and cut the mustard without any any sort of explanation. That's right. O. Hendy? O. Hendy? <laughs> o. Henry? Not just the candy bar in Canada. Also an author from the early 20th century. Whose books I am unfamiliar with except from... Uh, you know, modest amounts of uh, trivial knowledge. I believe he wrote the classic uh, trilogy, Milk, Chocolate, Peanuts, and Nougat, but I might be mistaken. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to be attempting something that's never been done before. I'm going to be trying to get into Boss Rush with only 27 seconds to spare. Nobody thought it could be done. And yet here we are. I don't know. It's going to be close. Just kidding easiest play of my life. Now, mind you, now that I think about it, we don't care to go in there at all because we got Curse of the Unknown. <laughs> Where did the term Bush League originate? Mm. Baseball clubs deemed to be unworthy of being a professional league were said to be Bush League because they played in rural areas, i.e. the Bush. You know, I, I, if you gave me enough time, I bet I could have figured that one out for myself. Okay, fair enough. I'm still, I'm trying to get over this cut the mustard. Like it literally, it has no, and I know, you know, meaning is arbitrary to begin with. Now cut the mustard has been given a meaning. If something cuts the mustard, it's more than adequate. Um, you know, it's, it's different. You know, I, this is why, you know, it, being an English teacher is very difficult. I'm, I'm very thankful every single day. And I say this a lot, that, I was like, I, I learned English ambiently from, you know, being born to English-speaking parents. It's honestly a huge, basically your luck stat starts out pretty high. And I know that sounds like a, potentially a charged thing to say. I want to be clear. I'm not saying English is a better language than, you know, any other language on planet Earth. All I'm saying is that I think English is fairly hard to learn, and also, it's spoken everywhere. You know, you get off at uh, Narita International Airport in Tokyo, Japan, there's English signs, you know? As maybe maybe everywhere is a bit of a stretch, but you get the idea. Um, is this is not an XL floor. But like, sometimes, you know, I have to explain, uh, like Kate has a language exchange, with a guy who uh, speaks Japanese and wants to learn English and he'll ask questions like why is something like this and she's like I don't know it just is and then she comes to me later and she's like why is this like this and I'm like I don't know just is <laughs> let me let me explain another it's another in the recurring and long-running series I have of uh, English 
sucks and doesn't make sense. This might be true of other languages, but I don't really know any other languages, so. Well, except JavaScript, where one plus quotation mark one plus one equals not a num. Okay, you get the idea. Um, but cut the mustard? Oh, it's really good. That's a really good thing. If you cut the mustard. Skillful. Cut the cheese? Who farted? Let me go over this again, for those of you who might be taking notes at home. Cutting the mustard? It's good. Cutting the cheese means you farted. So here's what you don't do. Let me give you an example. Wow, John's doing a really good job at work. He really cuts the mustard. First off, it's gonna make you sound, you shouldn't say it anyway, because it's slang from like the 1950s, or earlier, I guess. Um, but it's at least coherent. What you should not say is, <laughs> dear, dinner was delicious. Thank you for your cooking. You really cut the cheese. That makes it sound like whoever cooked you that dinner ripped the stinky fart. Now, I'm not here to say that it's, you know, any less sensible uh, one way or the other. I'm just saying cutting the mustard is inherently a ridiculous sentence to begin with. And then on top of that, cutting the cheese, which just as easily could have been cutting the mustard. It's a bad thing. Well, not a bad thing, but it's a natural bodily function, shall we say. Okay. I'm just, uh, the thing is, I'm hesitant to pop our Ansu's rune, even though I just did. And I did it to try to get that secret room shortcut, which is exactly what happened, thankfully. But, um, because on most floors, if we have the map, we know where the boss is. Sometimes, if you spawn in, like, the center, and it pinwheels out, anything could happen. You know, you might not be, uh, please, please, the curses today, it's too much. You're really cutting the cheese. I just want the rune that I so haphazardly tossed aside. You know what, we can at least use Hagalaz to destroy things we don't want to be next to. Anyway, um, I... Please! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, we're back. I'm invested here. Anyway, we if you spawn in the center of the floor, you're more likely... Wow, I'm dumb. If you spawn in the center of the floor, you're more likely to need the Ansu rune. But I also thought, hey, why not use it if you got it? You know, we're fairly likely to get, likely to get another Ansu rune in the future. If we don't get an Ansu's rune, we'll get another rune that's useful and we'll wish we had Ansu's, you know? Everything's still... Dare I kick it off again. Hunky Dory. HP is slightly precious right now, but uh, not super limited. Or if I can have my little conversational inflection that annoys a certain subset of the community. It's not too, too bad. That being said, and again, I can't say that this doesn't work in other languages as well. But it's almost the, the uh, arbitrary nature of the rules of English that make the language so open to artistry, you know? Because of the fact that there are rules those rules when they're broken can be broken deliberately in order to make a point you know I don't know if that makes any sense is the medium is the message sort of deal hold on hold on you know like because words are I mean every language I'm sure has spelling but my metaphor right now is essentially like you know because of the fact that words have codified spelling if you spell something wrong you can do it in such a way um, as to you know be provocative like for example Ice Cube's 1997 album America's Most Wanted you thought I didn't have an example you thought I came to this ridiculous point without having an example that tied it all together from the world of late 1990s hip-hop I don't think so I don't think so 
So I'm going to take Algis. No, you know what? Let's take Yera. Yera is just... It's just better, dude. Use that... On the chest. You're golden. There's no curse. See, this time we spawned in the center, but... I think it's still probably to the right. And dude, I can feel it. My voice is starting to get a little... Him a little up there. It's a good sign for this to be the last episode today. You know, I set out on Fridays. It's a little busy, but I like to do three episodes of all the main series. You know why? Well, I always, like, every day, I like to do one episode of every... Why, why walk into it? One episode of every series. So that, like, if it makes sense, I've paid for that day. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you had to pay someone, like the government, for example, uh, a certain cut of your income every single day to stay alive. Um, you want to at least do enough every day to pay for your own existence, if that makes sense. That's the way I look at this. Like, if I'm going to be coming out with a video every single day, Algis, please. Uh, from, you know, Gungeon Isaac Slay the Spire. I want to record a video every single day so that I didn't put myself behind. So three is very simple. It pays for Friday, the day on which I'm doing the recordings. It pays for Saturday, the day on which I record nothing. And then it pays for Sunday, which is just me getting the opportunity to get a day ahead. That I will never collect on until probably like next October. But that's okay. It's the way it's supposed to be. Now today I did three... Spire, three, Gungeon, four Isaac. That's right. Went over and above. Paid paid for Monday's Isaac, too. Ooh la la. Yo, this is an incredible get. We might have just gotten lucky. I mean, we got lucky with the items, but I mean specifically, like, we might have just gotten carried, which is a subtle but marked difference. I think it'll be this way. Like, Holy Mantle plus Dark Bum, and then, you know, Purity is also very good for us here. Pl sorry, plus Gimpy, which synergizes extremely well with Dark Bum on top of that. Like, let me just say, carried, probably, but it also, let's not say we got carried, let's say we got Yarried, because we brought the Yarrow rune. Sound good? Sounds good to me. I knew it. I saw the sparkle in his eyes. He had something for me. I don't know. There was a joke there, but then it was like, I don't have time for the joke. I don't want to, you know... It was going to be a joke about how it was a Stella Artois. And you'd be like, why is Stella Artois? And I was so well, in North America, the marketing for Stella Artois is oftentimes, uh, you know, two very professionally dressed, but obviously, you know, beautiful... Uh, young professionals, they go out to like a bar together, and then the man in his perfectly tailored suit just holds up one finger, and the bartender already knows what he wants. You know why? Because it's a fancy pants bar. They only sell one beer, the Cadillac of beers, Stella Artois. And then he, he pours it into a, a goblet, a glass goblet that's gold-rimmed at the lip. And then he takes out a special Stella Artois knife and he gets that foam out of there. You don't want any foam on top of your Stella Artois. And then he hands it to him. And I, I'm sure that, you know, they, they, usually the trailers are silent because you have to pay actors more to talk. But, you know, there's kind of an implied bon appetit. It's my favorite beer ad because uh, apparently in the rest of Europe it's considered... Uh, cheap garbage. And in, in North America, Stella Artois is like, Yeah, I'm feeling fancy. Give me eight Stellas. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See you.